Yes, you're seeing this right. Trees in Platform Masters, at last, and high quality ones at that. Note that this is actually only just a screenshot from my screenshot archive, as hinted at by this. I have another screenshot too. Just look at this amazing detail on this weeping willow. Oh my goodness, that is so amazing. Here's a Sassafras, pronunciation uncertain, and over here, right where the character is. And here's those same trees from the Ronis area that I showed you in that previous screenshot. Just look how much detail this really is for what you can do for trees. So, how am I getting such high quality trees? Well, that's what this video is all about. Well, kind of. I use Arboro. Notice that it's a .jar, a Java program. At first glance, it really don't seem like there's anything really significant here. But notice that there's a lot of parameters that you can set here. Not to mention more here. Then you got the leaves here that you can set. And the quantities and all that stuff. There's a whole lot of detail you can go into. And a tree basically starts from the trunk. It branches out from that. It branches out from that branch. And it branches out even farther from that. In fact, it just keeps going on and on. Except this program only allows for three, even though it's allowed to go up to eight in here. I don't get that. However, that's not the point of what I'm after. One annoying thing about this particular program, it defaults to the wrong directory. So I need to end up browsing my way over there. And this is where the... Uh, our borrow program itself is. Notice that it's right there. And this is also where all the main trees themselves are. Yes, palm trees. World 6, 7, 8, and 9 all use them. There's Sassafras. And then, of course, there's Weeping Willow. Here's something from Moose and Taiga. And, well, there's all kinds of things available in this. You're probably wondering, what's the difference between this one and this one? This is the original. This one is my enhanced version, the higher quality one. Higher quality? Ain't that going to affect the frame rate? Actually, it does not, and for one good reason. I am pre-rendering all of these trees. So, what may end up taking about 20 seconds to render, which may seem really, really bad for the frame rate, actually ends up turning into a simple, nothing more than PNG image that all I need to do is just load and run. And the game engine draws that PNG to image, which is actually a TGA when I'm done with things, for which I'll be using my own format, and it just draws blazing fast. You probably remember that 500 frames per second. Remember this? Frame rate? 531, despite all those trees. Frame rate? 502, despite all those trees. Kind of gives you a good idea, don't it? But this one here is my custom-made one. No, I don't want to rename it. Dumb program. Get that out of the way. This is my custom-made one that I had, and that's only because I, need, I just wanted a tree that was wide and had a high amount of foliage. Notice all these branches and stuff going all over the place. Here's a whole bunch of leaves sticking out from that. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of detail you can really go into for customizing this. But that just gives you that basic idea. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to render a few of my favorite looking trees. These ones are my favorites overall, but these are also a favorite. I'm actually not familiar with Sassafras trees. I haven't seen any until pretty much this point anyway. Or at least I'm not familiar with them. Let's just put it that way. So, how do I make this tree? It don't really look like anything, especially not compared to like what you saw in that game engine screenshots. First, I need to go to setup, and, uh, okay, how come this isn't set? Well, if I do set it to the Parvray executable, as this is hinting at, and I end up doing the render, I end up with an error. So, I'm leaving that out for now. As far as the seed goes, well, that's what this is all about. Just to give you the idea, this is the world number. Yeah, 36 is a little excessive, but it's just for testing in my case. I was just doing some testing earlier. And this is the layer number. 
this being the hundreds place of that layer number and this right there is the tree ID number so let's go render a tree I'm going to pick world hmm what's a good one world 6 sounds good I'm going to do a really far away tree which is still layer 64 that's pretty far so I think it's around 48 SU and of course I'm always starting with number 1 nothing really special there so now that that's done I go to this one instead of this one because this one isn't working properly I use this and of course the seeds there why don't I just use this instead easy if I change this it ends up resetting back to what it is so I end up losing what my place is so I just pretty much leave it as is for now and I hit start let it render and now it's already done it don't really seem to take that long does it so close out of that and you probably might have noticed on here Pavre meshes hmm that means I needed another program Pavre some of you might be familiar with this this is my basic file it's kind of like programming only you're defining scene type stuff and the program eventually just runs that accordingly notice some of the similarities here in the format but I need to change this so copy that and replace it in the four places where it is at And as far as this goes, I need to change this. And that was 64, if I remember. And number 1. And there you have it. Except I'm still not done yet. You're probably thinking, main ambient. Well, that's basically what Platform Master's ambient value really is. And the diffuse that's basically how much it spreads out from this and thus one minus the ambient gets you from the ambient light all the way up to what your original color is which is what these are here so and because I change species I need to go change these and that's what all this here is I'm going to spend my time changing that let's see five six two five and hmm, I know I had an extra five in there. That's just a dot five. Four oh six two five and seven five and three one two five. That's the only things I really have to change. Here I got some randomization so I can randomize the stem and leaf colors a little bit. Stem also includes the trunk, by the way and from there I can now pretty much render it so I hit save and one other thing that I have to consider I need to set the resolution notice here that I have a kind of a guide or table that I use for this the farther away they are the smaller the size I can use but the really close ones really need some crazy detail and just for this one case just as an example layer 48 Hmm, if I remember that was 48 SU, so that means it would be this one right there. So I change that to this. It's really tiny, but then again, you also have to remember, the tree is only 11 pixels tall in the final output. 11 pixels tall. Really tiny, but the foreground one's a lot bigger. So, now that I'm done, all I gotta do is hit run, and let it go. Parsing about... 12 million tokens and there's your final output kinda tiny don't you think so with that now known all I need to do is open that and I need to go to here main tree settings which is what that output is you remember that right first I need to go to image auto crop image and from there I can save that so what do I save it as well, for this, I usually use Z-Tree. I have some other test subjects from my previous run that I accidentally screwed up on in a previous take. So, that's uh, World 6, layer number 64, item number 1. Okay, you got that part right. That's my basic format. 
it doesn't have to be that but it's just the system that I use for my manual input so I just save that as is I clear out everything here just to optimize compression and hey that tree is now done so what's next I go to the next tree yes I can do that pretty quickly go over to here change this to a 2 and I generate the tree okay generated hit run wait for it to parse the 12 million tokens whatever a token is and here's your output okay now that that's done control 2 control F and save it Z tree let's see it was this one number 2 that's how long it takes to manually process a tree Notice that I said manually. This has definitely got to be automated, but there are some problems that prevent me from doing that. Mainly in that I don't know how you go about doing that. You might be wondering, what about the higher resolutions? What exactly will this tree end up looking like? Notice that I have an 8K in there too. Just to give you the idea, I'm going to use the 2K just as a <clears throat> kind of a brief setting. Since nothing changed, I can just rerun it let it run the 12 million tokens and here's the output ain't that nice of course all the lighting variations the, from the effects from the lighting end up causing it to look a little different but here you can clearly see shadows on it you can see all the rich details on the leaves and branches this isn't a particularly decent one but I've seen much better so what's this about automating well, the problem is, this seed number right here has to be included into this. Drop that from there, and that's one step closer to automating it. As in, basically, I drop that like so, except without the two there. That's just the basic idea. It would just be looking like that. And from that, another problem is, the seed, there's no way for auto-incrementing that. It doesn't have to be this exact same format that I use. I can just have it start from, just to give you the idea. Now, although it's probably a little much, but just the basic idea. I can just start it from there, hit auto-increment, and OK from there. That's basically what that is. And from there, there would probably be like another icon here for generating trees in succession. Of course, it does require that when I do this, this has to work, but there's also another problem. There's no way to choose what the scene file is. This generates the scene file. I don't want to do that. I want to use the existing one. So, once that is done, then I can truly auto generate trees all the way through and while I'm auto generating trees I can be working on platform masters in other areas such as these ground decals for Jeremy Thoth the far ones um okay why am I redoing them well actually originally that's because I had a 768 pixel repeat width or something like that and it's low enough that you can see the repeats in the far scenery that originated because of the array system that I originally had, which pretty much required that I started off with allocating to those particular arrays, and I could not exceed them. But now that I'm working with actual textures with um, SDL and stuff like that, which automatically allocates the memory, I no longer have that restriction. So I can add as many ground detail layers as I want although I do need to keep that 96 meg limit in mind for the memory. The pink lines are just my scaling grid so I can get a sense on the Z position. But that's covered in my video from quite a while ago on how I make ground decals, which is irrelevant. But once I get these trees generated, for which I can be doing this while waiting for trees to be generated in bulk, well, you get the basic idea some serious speed and progress with platform masters you can actually shave a whole three months off the progress the time needed as opposed to doing it manually where 
Okay, I'm generating a tree. I'm waiting for that. So I make a few pixels here. And this is done. Hit close. Switch to Parvre. Make those changes or whatever is needed. Hit run. Do some things here once it's generated. And then I go to process that image. And it's back to this. Updating the seed. You get the idea. It's I'm spending too much time doing that. Why do that manual stuff when I can automate it? But this program does not allow for that, and I need for it to do so. Could you update it? Thank you. This video was created by Ulululia. Thank you for watching.